Thank you so much. Welcome everyone to our Sunday morning service. We're so grateful that you're here in the sanctuary, at home, wherever you are. It's just wonderful to look out and see your smiling faces. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, Grateful. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Well, once again, welcome to our first hybrid service. So welcome to all of you who are here. <laughs> and to all of you who are still joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. It's just so nice to be together, however we're together. So let's come together in prayer right now. So I invite you to just close your eyes. Turn your attention inward. And let's just become aware beyond our physical senses of you, me, him, her, this and that, here and there, of that connection that we all share. Because truly, all creation, everything in the manifest universe is interconnected in the one life the one love, the one infinite goodness that is God, that truly God animates everything in creation. Its nature is ever present in everything, in everyone, in every moment. And so I absolutely know that God is present and its nature is revealing itself throughout our time together this morning. Through that sense of love and connection in being together, whether in person here or virtually. I know we feel the vibration of God's love and creativity giving of itself through all those who are of service this morning. I know we are inspired and uplifted by God operating through our musicians, Sam and Karen and our soloist, Jody this morning and Mary who leads our chants. And I know that once again, we hear the perfect message of the divine through Dr. Mark, that the message he shares with us this morning has been inspired by that love intelligence of spirit, and it helps us to awaken to that true essence of our being, to that divine presence within, so we can experience and express it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for all the blessings, the healing, and the revealing that unfolds during our time together. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.
And so please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so let's join together in our congregational hymn, Joy and Peace in My Heart. Please be seated. So, one day soon we'll get back to hugging, right? Very, very soon. <laughs> we all need to know that together. So this is a time where we get to give ourselves the gift of meditating, of communing with that presence within all of us. And so I invite you right now to just get still in your chairs, to close your eyes, to turn your attention inward. And for the next five minutes, just silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Silently repeat that over and over, and I will bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Okay, well, <laughs> this is great. <sighs> it's so nice to be with people again, isn't it? Gosh, feels like things are starting to shift. They're amping up, ramping up, whatever we might say. So I hope that we've taken this time, this 15 months or so, to improve the quality of our consciousness. Today I'm going to talk about getting along with people because it seems to be a human pastime that when we are unhappy with ourself, the natural thing to do is see somebody outside of us and make them the problem, right? 
<laughs> Isn't that the thing? It's sort of like an American pastime, but I don't think it's American. I think it happens all over the world, that in order to take the focus, the heat, off ourselves, we project it onto someone else. Everyone, I heard this when I first came into metaphysics, and I've, and I've played with it for years and years, and I, and I enjoy this. Uh, because it always makes me smile, and it's that everyone who comes into our life is either our lover or our teacher or both, and you don't necessarily know which at the time. I think that's really interesting because we don't know when people come into our life what's the curriculum. We don't know what we're going to learn, but I guarantee it's a two-way street. We're going to learn from them, they're going to learn from us, and, and we don't always know at the time. You know, somebody starts out as a friend, but then they become a more intimate relationship. Somebody's an intimate relationship, they become more of a friend. In life, people obviously are the greatest joy that we experience, right? If you think about the greatest joys you've had in life, they probably involve some shared experience with someone or someones. Hmm. In life, people are also our greatest challenge, don't you think? I mean, the things that keep us up most at night usually have some concern around people. For happy relationships, I think we have to not be seeking to control, because I don't know about you, I thought the way to happy relationships was to try to control everybody and everything. And I worked on that for years, and you know, it's actually exhausting and it doesn't work. So, speed ahead, speed ahead, speed ahead. <laughs> not trying to control others, uh, uh, just, we have to allow people the same grace we want to receive ourselves, which is to allow people to just be. I think that's not so easy, is it? It's just not as easy as it sounds. I mean, it seems like it should be really, really easy. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna let you be, just gonna let you be. How often we're convinced we know what is best for somebody else, right? I don't know about you, but I have certainly been that person where I look at somebody and I know what they need to do and I just don't understand why they can't see it. And if they could just do it, they could get their life together and we could move on from this story. But you know, that's not how it works. We think we know what's best for someone else's evolution. And the truth is, I don't think we do because often we don't even know what's best for our own growth and our own healing and our own evolution. And if we do do, if we do know, so often we don't actually do it. Right? So it's easy to love the people that we love, right? Our family, our friends. But there's not necessarily a lot of growth or a lot of healing in loving the people you already love and agree with, right? So what about the other people? Ah, this is where the juice is. You know, those that are not so easy to get along with. And I suspect, like me, during the time of COVID, you may have created, perhaps all in your mind, a couple of relationships with people out in the world that are challenging, you know? Well, those are the relationships where the growth comes. That's where the healing comes. That's where our consciousness gets expanded. The ones that are not so easy to get along with. The ones we don't like or even find hard to love. The ones we want to withdraw our attention from again and again and just pretend they don't exist. I won't even look. I won't even look. I won't even look their way. If you have been in class with me, um, I often teach this idea of a coach to everywhere. And what this is, is that this is like a metaphor where um, we're the coach and out on the road there are pedestrians. And the pedestrians that crop up on the road, um, humanly we want to think those people out there are the problem. But what we teach is that those people that show up out here in life on the road are a reflection of something that we're believing in here. They're showing us an error belief that we have held in consciousness, something that is not the truth. It is something that we have believed. It comes from past experience, but it has yet to be brought to the light for healing and release. Right? So we have this inaccurate error belief in our coach. And when we don't deal with it for a long time, what happens is it shows up out on the road in life as a person. Does this make sense? Because like I said, no, I don't want to heal that, I don't want to heal that, I don't want to heal that. And the universe says, well, you're going to. And if you're not going to heal it at home in your prayer chair, you're going to heal it on the street. So like I said, you can do it in your seat or on the street. It's better to do it in your seat because it's, it's private. It's a little more comfortable. It's, it's just, you know, I can go at it at my own pace. But out on the street where a person comes into my sphere, I, I, you know, wow, that's going to really challenge me in public. 
So we teach that people show up in our life and they reflect back to us false beliefs, error beliefs that have existed in our consciousness. So example, somebody out here in the world doesn't want to pay you more money. You really want to raise in your job, but, but they don't want to pay you more money. So normally what we do in life is we make that person who says they're not going to pay us more money, we make them, they're the problem. You know, they won't pay me. What a cheapskate. Blah, 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 blah. Or perhaps they don't treat me with respect. That might be another thing. If not, more money, maybe what we want is to be treated with respect. Right? And it would be easy to get agreement in the world, wouldn't it? We would know, every one of us would know exactly who to go to, to tell our story to, so they would validate us that we were right and the other person has wronged us. Right? But it always comes back to our consciousness. It comes back to what we believe about life, of what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about other people. And I know people love to say, well, the universe or God's just not fair. You're right. It's not. God is not fair. The universe is not fair. The universe is reciprocal. That's what we teach in the science of mind. Fair is a value judgment, and it changes moment by moment. Right? Person by person, fair changes. But reciprocal is I get back what I put out. You know? I what I really, really believe in, where I really am putting my faith right now, that's what the universe is giving to me. So if I have a belief with regards to being paid more, that I want to be paid more, and my belief is that someone outside of me is not paying me more, so therefore they are in charge of my good. That's a false belief. No one outside of you is in charge of your good. God within you is the barometer. Right? Your ability to accept is that barometer of what God within you is trying to give. If I believe I've been disrespected, I believe someone can treat me as less than. Now, how could anybody really think about this? You are part of God. You are part of the infinite spirit. How could someone treat the infinite as less than? It's just not possible. Right? So the spiritual truth for all of us, I believe, is that the source of all good is within me, within you right now. And this realization of my oneness with the source of all good, and that that source is within me now, that realization will heal me in whatever condition is in my life. No one can keep my good from me. No one can keep your good from you. Your good is yours by right of consciousness, because you are an expression of God. Right? So I want to say something about the respect thing, that no one can make you feel bad about yourself. Eleanor Roosevelt said, without your consent. And I don't understand why people are so willing to consent. You know, because the truth is you are one with God. And if you knew you were one with God, how could you possibly feel bad about yourself? You are one with all of life. And if you really knew that you were one with all life, how could we ever possibly feel like we were less than or disrespected? You know, I'm not saying that we're better or worse than anyone, that you are loved by God, as is everyone on the planet. You are valuable beyond measure. And no one can take what has been divinely given, what is divinely ordained from you. Tell yourself, I'm surrounded by love. I am filled with love. I am filled with life itself. And there's no blame. See, it's an extraordinary thing to get off that wheel of blame and say, you know what? There's nothing to blame. Everything came into my life. Even the stuff that doesn't look good, it came to bless me. It came to grow my spirit. It came to grow my soul, my consciousness. We have to have a willingness to look at what is difficult, to face our demons, you know, to be absolutely honest with ourselves. So Jesus says, you must be born of the spirit. And he says, you must be born again. And I think this is the new birth. A new outlook on life is the new birth, right? A new way of thinking. Right? A new relationship to those around us and to that presence of God that's within us. See, we live and move and have our being in spirit. Ernest Holmes teaches us that in the Science of Mind textbook. There is nothing in me that can give hurt or receive hurt. And I have to know that about myself. Right? And we want to realize that all people live in God. We are one with all people. Our minds merge with the minds of other people. We are, in fact, connected on the unseen side of life. So there is no place where you and I begin and leave off, right? Mentally or spiritually. I mean, physically, yes, you end over there and I end over here, physically. But mentally and spiritually, we're, we're in the soup together, right? Our minds merge with the minds of other. All the while, this silent force, this spirit within us attracts and repels all in accord with our accepted thought patterns, 
right? It's done unto you as you believe. It's done unto me as I believe. If there's something within us that doesn't connect with other people in love and joy, there's something inside of us that feels the hurt of life, right? We just believe that we can be hurt, that we can be separate from good, that we could be separated from love. People can have opinions entirely different from ours. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we want to be flexible enough to recognize that their opinions are necessary to them for their growth, for their evolution, right? Even though I may not agree that people get to think what they think. And we ideally don't resist, ideally. You know, we're not here to control other people's thoughts and actions, although I have often thought that I was. <laughs> uh, nothing has ever happened Ultimately, in the big, big picture, nothing has ever happened in our life that could hurt the trajectory of our soul's growth. You know? Yes, we all go through difficult things, and I know this last year and a half has been extraordinarily difficult for people. But I look, I look to the scriptures and I see that again and again, the great teachers tell us to come out of the shadows and step into the light. Right? So the problem is not that the light is not shining on us. The problem is that we so often are standing back in the shadows. And we need to come out from around the corner of the shadow and step into the light. God is in everyone, everyone. You may feel so much in life is against you, perhaps, you know, uh, because many of us have at different times. But I want to say right now, forget the past. I for forgive it. Just forgive it. The, the way to forget it is to forgive it, if you can forget it. But you can forgive it and forgive everyone, everyone, everyone. People are doing the best they can. We know that. I know at a very deep level of our being. We know people are doing the best they can. Uh, so again in the Bible it says, seek ye first the kingdom and everything will be added. This is an admonition to find the spirit of God within ourselves. You know? I think this is why the spiritual masters go and spend so much time alone because they're cultivating that. They're cultivating that I am one with God consciousness. Um, but the adjustment that we're talking about today has to be made within us. God uses it all for our good. God uses it all for our growth. God uses it all for our healing, including those difficult people who show up in our life. We want the spirit in us to meet the spirit in them. There's only one spirit, after all, in which we all live and move and have our being. We're all rooted in God. So often, um, I have shared with people this, uh, I have a handout for you, it'll be out on the patio today, it's called the Oneness Prayer. Because uh, who doesn't love a handout, right? You know, absolutely, you know? Um, and so, um, years ago, my practitioner used to be Vittura Papke, and she was Ernest Holmes' practitioner after Hazel died. And, uh, and she was just um, one of those people who was loving and sweet and gentle and would always kick my spiritual butt. It was just the funniest thing, you know, because I think, I'm, oh, I'm going to go sit for an hour with this lovely little old lady with the white hair and the little fur coat, and she's going to talk to me about God. And every time it was like a two by four, you know? It, it was, I, I, but I guess that's how God needed it to be to get my attention. It needed to come in a very gentle looking package and then boom, it would get my attention. So anyway, um, why was I telling you that? Oh, I don't know. But anyway, uh, oh, I know, because Vittura used to always say that when she would demonstrate a treatment or an affirmation for someone, she would always use Tom Jones as the name in her treatment. And then she'd say, and look what it did for his career, All right? So, um, I'm going to, uh, I use Ernest. It's just easier that way. I figure Ernest is paying attention to what's happening with the teaching on some level, so I like to, you put Ernest in here. And so this is the prayer, and I'm going to ask you to think about the person that you want to make some progress with. There's only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. In knowing that I am one with the life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with each and every expression of this divine and sacred life, which includes beloved, and here's a little fill-in, Ernest or Tom Jones, whoever you're working with, okay? Because I know that the one life of God cannot be against itself, I therefore know that I cannot be against Ernest, nor can Ernest be against me. Together, in the perfect wholeness of the one life that is God, 
Ernest and I can only be for a fuller and greater expression of our own true nature, which is love. And out of the self-giving nature of this love, there can only be a harmonious integration and a glorious revelation of the wholeness, perfection, and beauty of God through my physical flesh body now. I give thanks for the presence of Ernest in my life, for by this presence I have been shown a part of myself that I have yet to love, a part of myself which I now invite into the wholeness of my being, which is Christ. If you don't like Christ, just put love there instead. And it is in this awareness of oneness that I give thanks to the glory of God for the healing power and presence of love in my life. I am grateful God is gracious, and so it is. Amen. And if you just, and now here's my encouragement how to work with this. So you fill in somebody's name who you want to really make some progress with, and then every day you say this out loud, and you mark on the bottom of the page, day one, two, three, and you do this for 30 days. So for a whole month, you do this, and I guarantee you, shift will happen if you do this out loud every day for 30 days. Let's turn our attention inward for a moment now. So we turn our attention inward to that presence of the most holy one, that's everywhere but within us. We realize here in this moment that we are one with God, one with each other, one with life, one with the infinite. And whatever our challenge is today, we know, we affirm and we believe that the power works through us to bless and to heal all that needs to be blessed and healed. Because I, because we are one with God and we are one with all people, because we are one with life and one with all that lives, we feel that union with all people, with nature, with life. We feel that we belong to life. We love life. We enter fully into the joy of living. We enter into cooperation with others. We know something within us reaches out and embraces the whole world. Something within us blesses everything it touches and brings life and happiness and joy to everyone. Something in us acts as a healing balm. And as we listen to the spirit within us, I am certain that we are born again, that we are raised up, that we are healed, that we are now born in joy and hope and gladness and love and faith and assurance and every good thing. And so we include the people we love in our treatment this morning. We know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of God's spirit is there. Wholeness, perfection, completion. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So from our consciousness, connected to every other consciousness on the planet, we declare that love is the order of the day. Peace and harmony and healing. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is a gracious upliftment of consciousness for each and every one of us, and we say yes to it. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. We'll sing one time. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart as we say our statement of giving together. The ushers will not collect your gift. You will put it in the basket on the way out the door. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
give it up for the drummer. This world keeps trying to bring me down, but I listen to those crazy sounds. I got my Jody Siegel, everyone. Jody, can you tell us, uh, for those who want to get your music online, how do they do so? Jodysiegel.com, and I do have a new CD uh, with me. What a coincidence. Oh, <laughs> we love that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Judy. And <laughs> Jody, I just called you Judy. <laughs> 
And let's give it up for our wonderful Sam and Karen. <laughs> so, uh, as we stated just before the collection, those of you who are here who would like to uh, drop off a check or a donation in person, there are boxes at uh, the back in the foyer as you're exiting where you'll be able to do that. Um, and of course, if you prefer to give online or for those who are watching us virtually, uh, different ways you can uh, make your donations. One, call into the church, 818-762-7566 and we will be here for about 30 minutes after service to take your donation by credit or debit card. Um, also, you can uh, go to online to nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you directly to the page where you can make your one-time or set up a recurring donation online, and you can also text the word give to area code 818-457 Three four one nine. I don't know why I have to look down for that number every time. I've been saying it for how long now? <laughs> Before I move forward with our next announcements, uh, thank you to Kira James for our beautiful welcome back to church flowers this morning. <laughs> so, prayer with a practitioner for those of you who are online right now. Uh, as usual, you can get prayer with a practitioner in a private breakout room via Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live, please just go over to our website, nhcrs.org, and get the Zoom link, and we can connect you up with a practitioner. For you, those of you who are here in person, if you would like prayer with a practitioner, we have lists that you can sign as you exit the sanctuary or at the welcome table. Give us your information, how a practitioner can call you, and uh, we will have uh, a practitioner pray with you in that way. Either way, we're going to keep supporting everyone in consciousness. Uh, you can continue to email prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office. And option four allows you to leave a voicemail. And we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send out an email to all of our practitioners. So we make sure you are getting lots of prayer support. Wednesday evening service, which continues right now, still on a virtual basis only. Uh, meditation begins at 6.50 p.m. Service starts at 7, uh, Facebook Live and Zoom. And my topic this coming week is spiritual reprogramming. All those years around software developers, you knew it was gonna happen at some point, right? <laughs> Feeding the homeless. Our Love and Kindness Ministry will be feeding the homeless today. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please go to our website to get more information. Living a Course in Miracles. This group, which is facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, uh, will be meeting via Zoom this Thursday, May 20th, from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. And all are welcome. And our limited in-person attendance in the sanctuary continues. So as you all are aware, uh, we're open for people to join us in person. Uh, beginning, if you're interested in coming next Sunday, uh, you need to go to our website to sign up since we have limited seating at this time. And so uh, sign-ups can begin at, for next Sunday at noon today on our website or call the church office. And as I said earlier, the Wednesday service will be continue, uh, we'll continue to offer that on Zoom and Facebook Live only. The Zoom virtual patio, for those who can't be in person here today, just uh, stay online on Zoom and you can visit with the congregation afterwards or join us 20 minutes before our services on Sunday and Wednesday. The men's group meets via Zoom today from 11 to 11.30. And our Zoom meditation, if you haven't joined that, it's such a wonderful group uh, from 8 to 8.15 a.m. Monday through Saturday. We just come together and meditate for 15 minutes. It's a really great experience. So just visit. Where do you go uh, to get information? N-H-C-R-S dot org. You got it. Yay. <laughs> I love that I can reach out to people and get a response. 
So yes, that'll get you all the Zoom links and you can sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters and every answer you ever wanted your whole life. I, I bet it's there. <laughs> Thank you again for being with us, whether here in the sanctuary or in virtual land. We're just so glad we're back together in this way. Let's stand and let's sing for our peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. What do I say next? <laughs> I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. I'm totally busted. I was thinking about brunch. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Thank you for choosing church.